Today marks 125 days since CUB threw a workforce into the gutter outside their factory who had worked there for a combined 907 years. And it also marks two days since we've got our first picket, da picket baby. Picket line baby born two days ago. A little boy, born safe and well. That's how long this dispute has gone for. Over four months now, 18 weeks tomorrow. A new baby whose father does not have a job. A new baby whose father who doesn't know how he's gonna pay his mortgage. A new father who's fighting for that newborn's future. No matter the pressure, these guys have stood strong. These people are the vanguard of your rights and conditions. And they've copped a bit of flack for that. People have said to them, why don't you just move on? If you don't like it, why don't you go somewhere else? Well, here's the thing, comrades. If when things get bad, we just go somewhere else, and everybody just keeps going somewhere else. How do things ever get better? They don't. They will only get worse, and we will doom ourselves to what we've seen in America, the UK, and New Zealand. We need to make a stand in this country for workers' rights like we did about 120 years ago for the eight-hour day. We were the world leaders back then, and we need to be world leaders in workers' rights today. We have enough resources in this country for everyone to live comfortably. But while there's two sets of laws in this country, one for the rich and one for everyone else, we will never have equity or a fair go. Now, I respect our police officers immensely, but what does it tell you about our society when a business can pick up the phone and have a private security attachment arrive out the front of their house that you pay for. I've seen how much money they make. I'm pretty sure they can afford their own security and we don't have to subsidise it. I'm pretty sure, seeing the executive pay of the board, they don't need to subsidise that by putting their hands in the pockets of working class suburban people. But this is the story of our society. This is the direction we're heading in. And unless these people stand up and give other Australians an example, a light in the dark, some hope and show. If you stand together, united behind your union, you will never be defeated. Yeah. Now there's something else about this dispute. If this had finished in two weeks, none of you here would have ever heard about it. If this factory had to produce components of door handles, you probably would never have heard about it. The fact that it's beer, something so integral to our culture, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> the fact it was a big multinational not paying any tax in the form of Saab Miller, and the fact that it's gone for 125 days, although there have been cold days, long days and hard days, the fact that these guys have made those sacrifices has highlighted this. Otherwise, you would never know this loophole in the Fair Work Act existed. We would never have been able to put this on the political stage because now we've achieved it looks like we have the numbers for a Senate inquiry into corporate evasion of the Fair Work Act. Yeah. Yeah. That is thanks to the flood wet and tear of these 55 blokes. It would never have happened otherwise. It's probably happened in hundreds of other workplaces around Australia that weren't unionised and never got the coverage. This is a very important moment in this dispute. We have a new owner, AB InBev, and we are extending the olive branch of peace. Like Ivan said, we didn't start this blue. 
came without any warning. We didn't want this. But we are not here crawling, begging. We are here standing proud after 125 days and we have thousands of Australians at our back. We have the moral and financial support of unlike anything I have ever seen in my short life. And I'm going to tell you right now, we don't want this fight to continue, but if it does, we will go as long as it takes and that brewery will crumble before our resolve does. So as we always do, there's three words that sum this dispute right up. And just quietly, I've brung this ute here every day this week and given it to them, so they know what those words are. But just in case some of you don't know what they are, shame, shame, shame. I'm going to count you in. One, two, three. Shame, shame, shame! Shame, 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 shame! Thank you very much for your continued support. Yeah.